there we go. So here we are for the third and last video about building a bench. And we said, I think in the English version too, that we're going to have a special guest today. And he's standing right next to me, Florian Horsch. For those who don't know him, he's going to introduce himself very quickly. And then we're going to get working because we got a ton of stuff to do today. Yeah. So nothing to me. Of work. Yeah. To so you. my name is Flo. I'm with Shaper for, I think, more than two years now. Um, and yep, today we're going to add some eye candy, I guess, to the, to the bench project and uh, use Shaper Origin, our first product, a digital handheld precision router um, to cut some inlays, right? For those that don't see them. So they already prepped some, some, some stuff for us, basically the Festool logo. And it's made out of, what, what kind of wood it is, is it? Um, walnut. Walnut? Yeah. So we have some walnut and we're gonna basically transfer the logo into the bench that we built to make it look a bit more Festool-like and to have something memorable in a way. And since that is a perfect application for the Shaper Origin, that's why you're here. And it's gonna be more a Shaper video than a Festool video. So we're gonna talk about some minor Festool gadgets, sanding paper and stuff, but everything else is probably gonna be Shaper-wise. Yeah, but we can also talk about how to combine Origin with uh, Festool products. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity. So on this one, we have 12 millimeter walnut. Yep. And we placed our digital template onto it yesterday. My colleague Andy helped me out here and we cut the, the positive inlays, right? So today will be about mainly about cutting the pockets right into the bench. Um, we don't disassemble the bench, we will do it on the job site. Um, that's a good thing, right? You can take mobile handheld CNC style precision and take it anywhere. If you want to cut uh, on the floor, you can bring it to the floor. If you want to cut on a bench, you bring it to the bench. And then for like um, more intricate work, you can also use the workstation, shape a workstation. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do right now because we have a little yeah, mistake a here maybe we can uh, get a quick detail shot so there was a little bit of overlap for this o from the fest tool uh, logo into the second board so there's a gap here so we need to recut this o yeah. um so let's dive into it but before we go to the shape workstation maybe let's take a quick look at origin itself so this is it uh shaper origin uh, a digital handheld precision router and if you look at it it almost looks like a router could be like an from the size, I guess, like an O of 1400, something like this. Yeah, roughly this. All. Yeah. Um, but there are some key differences, right? Um, there's a big display here. We will see it powered on in a little bit. Um, there's a camera on the back. So this camera will enable the tool to orient itself in space. So there's a marker system called Shaper Tape. And as soon as this camera sees uh, the dominoes, every domino is different than the next one, and they, they are used as markers in space. So if the camera sees this, it can perfectly accurately um, position itself in space on your workpiece. And then there's one key difference, we should definitely check this out. The spindle, which is normally fixed on every router, um, is movable here, right? So there are two precision motors here in the shoulders of the tool, and they can precisely move um, Origin spindle. And this is what allows um, Origin to autocorrect your hands. So while you're moving and you follow the digital template, um, the precision motors will autocorrect um, the minimal mistake you will definitely make uh, while following the line and um, therefore you will get a perfect cut. So let's take a look right here. So quick comment on Shaper Workstation. Shaper Workstation is our latest product and in combination with Origin it really builds the complete system for your shop. So before Origin was much more like a mobile tool which you can take to the job site and so on but now it's getting more homey in, in your workshop uh, with Shaper Workstation. Um, you can put it onto your NFT table or uh, onto your workbench and it helps you to quickly align um, whatever workpiece you have, right? So uh, I don't know if you want to take a detailed look with the camera or... Um, we can, but yep. make it quick. Yep. Okay, so we have this 12 <laughs> millimeter board and we um, aligned it flush. So that's really easy with this shelf style. Yeah. Um, so you basically just do it by hand Check it where ah, you can it actually use this rest bar and pop it on here. Okay. So you get it quickly aligned. Just move it super up. Super quick. Right. Fix it. Be good. The cool thing is you can also completely remove the shelf and pop in a table leg or stool leg and do vertical cuts for it, all kind of joinery. Yeah. So like for the legs, for example. Right. Yeah. 
Lots so of that actually on the website. brings in a whole new axis, basically. A complete new axis, right? You yeah. can do vertical cuts much taller in, in length than on a normal flatbed CNC, for example. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. I already placed um, my digital template, so I can see the contour now. Origin almost acts like a mouse pointer now, <laughs> like a pointing device. And I have three main options here, scan, design, cut. I already scanned my, my setup. I already designed, so I placed my missing O here, and now I go into the last mode, which is cut mode. So in cut mode, you see all the contours which you can potentially cut. You can change them from outside cut to inside, for example, but now we want to have the positive, right? So here's the O, and I definitely want to cut on the outside, yeah. and of course on the inside. Let's start with the inside to uh, get rid of the little uh, square shape. Mm -hmm. Just for a small reminder, we're going to use a tool, it's going to be quite noisy or a bit, so maybe mute it a bit, but yeah. you can hear it. All right, I will try to comment while I'm cutting. Uh, I hope you can hear me, um, otherwise... Yeah, but, will... but also, this is going to be a short video. There are so many videos that you already right. created yeah. on YouTube, on your it's homepage, like, Shaper know, Tools. 140 videos uh, in our YouTube channel, yeah. just search for Shaper Tools or go to shapertools.com. Right, so let's check it out. Some safety gears, protect your eyes and ears, and let's start it. So if you keep the, uh, which is called set up, you can accurately uh, stroke your cutter. So you put your cutter in at whatever depth you want, and or it will help you with the pressure of one button to measure, or yeah, stroke your cutter um, super accurately. So you can type in whatever depth you want to cut to, and or it can be a perfect connection. So it's easy to go for like a tenth of a millimeter precision uh, in the set. All right, now finally. And there we have an O. Perfect. So, so just as a small summary, since it was probably hard to hear, the explanation while working what you just did except for sweating yep. was mainly um we had the o preset on it that was something you explained earlier before yep. we started yep. and you just made a couple of runs um because you wanted to get really close to the thickness of the material right which i didn't measure accurately enough beforehand well, so it took happen. me took me some extra passes. Uh, I thought it would do like three passes, three passes. not yeah. like five. Easy. So you would do the first two uh, with a little offset. Yeah. And then on the last pass, you go on contour and therefore you get a very nice finish, the so-called finish pass. So it's two roughing passes and then but one finish pass. That's a way you usually use routers in general, as a cabinet maker, as a carpenter, right. carpenter, you do a couple of runs and the last one is to smooth the edges over. And that's basically what we just did with the Shaper Origin, just without using any templates or anything, because the machine does that for you. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, like very, very nice finish on the edges, a little bit of tea out because we are using upcut spiral bits, so they tee out the material, but if we give it a quick finish yeah. on the edges, mm -hmm. it will be perfect. All right, so let's continue and bring in the bench. Yeah, so we're just going to move the table out, get the bench in here, and basically do the negative parts for that. Right, so we're going to use a mode called pocket mode. And the pocket mode is always combined uh, with an inside cut. So pocket mode is a very rough operation. Um, you can be quick. Oh, we should quickly remove this one. <laughs> yeah, better be safe uh, than sorry. That would be an expensive mistake. Uh, if, you, if you're covered by Shaper Pro, we will instantly <laughs> repre replace your machine. Oh, well, that's, um, that was a smart transition. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you should, of course, like Origin is a very sturdy machine, uh, but of course, make sure Just that you don't, don't drop, drop it. it off the workbench, otherwise the display so might We're going to move it slightly that way. Thing. Like this? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Um, for you guys who've seen the previous two videos, um, don't listen to it now, but the other ones who are just watching this video, we've built that completely with Festool machines, using saws, using the Domino um, miter saw, basically what you need for it. Um, if you're interested in that, those are probably linked below or just Google Festool Live <laughs> or use it on, on uh, 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 YouTube. 
So what we're going to do, we've made that O and we have the other letters and they're just going to be basically routed into the top part of the bench and we're using walnut because it's a big difference in color. Right, so it's going to give us a nice contrast and there are a couple of ways how you can do that with origin. Uh, let me quickly see which one, yeah. Okay, so I guess the most straightforward approach would be to apply shaper tape. So if you're not working uh, stationary on the shaper workstation like you saw before, you're going to use um, a tape called shaper tape. Every domino marker has a different pattern and therefore Origins camera can orient itself in space. So most straightforward would be to apply this tape onto the bench itself and we're going to do this just in a second. Let's imagine the, uh, the bench is more awkwardly shaped or maybe um, there's not as many back supports here or whatever. Uh, you could also use a reference board. So you could just use a thin piece of MDF and apply some shaper tape here as a means of orientation. And you would clamp it or screw it onto your workpiece and then cut uh, through a window. I mean, funnily enough, we use the Festool brand here as a cut through window, but this is not a template. So Origin will not reference itself off those yeah. physical lines. We actually are like one millimeter in and then we would cut it. But we're not, not gonna use it. We're gonna go risky or like more fancy, I guess, and show off what our Origin can do for you. All right, so I will use shaper tape and just um, lay it out. I will not care too much how much I'm applying right now. I, I wanna be on the safe side. Um, and we, we really haven't made up our mind where we place it. Yeah. We're going to look into that. And a question that gets frequently asked, um, you don't have to align the tape perfectly parallel or anything. Not at all. Just yeah. stick it on there and be good. You could go vertical. Uh, you, could even, you could even cut those dominoes apart in a white space and, and put them wherever you want. Yeah. The, the reason why we've gone for a tape uh, format is really because it's very quick to apply, you just lay it down and it's very easy to remove, right? Because uh, after you're done, you can just uh, take it off again. I think I'm over taping heavily. If we yeah. gonna apply the, the like logo here, those maybe those? like three would have been yeah. enough. I just want to be on the safe side yeah. because we didn't really talk it through beforehand. Yeah. Tape um, some more. Just tape some more. Uh, no, like <laughs> I will not go further. Yeah. Why? Because Origins camera is in the front, right? It will always look in the front. Mm -hmm. You don't tape where you cut. Yeah. You tape in the front of the tool where you want to cut. So I, I assume you're going to go somewhere So here. that template piece that you have is something that you could reuse and reuse yes. and reuse. Yeah. So tape can be a consumable. Let's say you want to do an inlay on a wood floor, then it's a consumable. You yeah. lay it down, you cut it. You can also cut through tape, not a problem. Yeah. And you're going to be fine. Um, Sometimes you can reuse tape in terms of reusing uh, templates or with Shaper Workstation, this is a permanent surface and you don't need to retape at all. Yeah. So it's there forever. All right, um, I'm gonna bring in Origin. Where is she? Here. Is it a she? It's a she, yeah. I mean, in German language, we have uh, different, how do you say? Uh, pronouns. Pronouns, uh, and we we decided it's a she. Yeah, yeah it's fine. The, oh, the, 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 the origin, the origin. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so I laid down the tape and let's maybe look onto the screen together. Uh, we're going to use the scan mode to capture reality. So okay. that's something you did earlier with the O piece. We just didn't do it on camera, so now people can right. see how that actually works. Yeah. Basically scanning your whatever yeah. you want to call it. There, there are like three main options in origin. It's scan, design, cut. Right, And we are now doing the scan, new scan, starting the scan, and now you can see what the camera actually can see. Let me start it again to not have my finger <laughs> in the scan. And I'm moving Origin along. Um, usually, of course, you're recommended to work on horizontal planes, I guess. Um, right now we have a little bit of an angle in here. I think it's still good for a safe operation. Um, just make sure you're in control of Origin. You can even pick up origin like I'm doing right now to scan like the front here, mm -hmm. right? So now it's okay. basically progressing the data that yep. it collected. Yeah. All right. Now I'm feeling a little bit stupid because I should have taped a little bit more, I guess, to capture the left side than we could have uh, probed on the left hand side. But I think we still can do this. So if I'm here, yeah, it should be fine. All good. Because what I will do now, I can 
visually place um, the design file here. Yeah. Or I can. Um, this one stopped. I'll break it. Hit the break. Um, I can visually place it, or I can actually reference with my with my cutter mm -hmm. uh, to get a very accurate. Uh, it depends brief. where we want to put the festival logo. If we want to put it centered, or we yeah. want to put it slightly off center, yeah. it's totally up to you. So let's decide. I guess let's go for maybe number two and three. Uh, this one and this one. Let's put it in here, and let's go for the middle. So we, we try to place it center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you, do you need the measurement or anything? Uh, yes. I so think. I think it's in total one meter and eighteen centimeters. Okay. But yep. since I don't trust myself, I think you're right. Uh, it was nine centimeters to each uh, screw. Yep. yep. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, maybe you wanna quickly capture this one because I think it's quite neatly soft. So I will. How, how do I place something accurately in the middle, right? So what I will do is I will use the grid mode. I start a new grid and I will use the cutter, which is here a six millimeter um, up spiral bit cutter. I will use the cutter to, to, to probe my, my workpiece. Um, I define the depth by pressing the green button. So I will lower the cutter. I will actually not probe here, but I will probe right on the the middle one. On oh, the middle sorry. one, yeah. Maybe so I, I can capture that. I will lower it here. Little guys. All right. I will confirm the depth. And now maybe you want to watch this on the screen now because this is getting more exciting. You can see your cutter virtually. And you can see how you're hitting against mm -hmm. um, the middle one. Don't, uh, uh, for people watching it, watching it carefully, if you move up, it looks like the cutter is slightly in, inside the material. It's because we uh, rounded off the edges. It's because we are rounded off the edges and also there's a light, slight tilt to the camera, but the, the grid itself will be perfectly accurate. You can do two-sided cuts from two sides and you will not see any shift. Okay, so I'm um, probing, right? I guess you're right. It's the, how we call it, chamfer, I think. Yeah. Chamfer. Okay, so, whoop, and I'm gonna probe once. So I have one point, now I'm moving for a second probe. So just move somewhere, on just somewhere. So if you define two points in a space, uh, you will define an, a line. So I'm probing the second point right here, and now I will pick up origin, and I will probe the left hand side of one of those sticks. Whoop! Getting entangled in the cables. All right. So I'm probing the left hand side. And now I have what we call a grid. So if you look really closely, you can see those dotted lines now. Yep. And I get an accurate measurement up here and the X, Y coordinates all the time when I'm moving. So now we need to get half of it. So it's 50 centimeters, nine, 59, right? 50. How, far, how wide is the Festo logo? Uh, seven, seven centimeters uh, high. So maybe you can uh, take your stick measure and we quickly see where we want to oh, place height. it. Yeah, height. So one of those sticks is four centimeters. Uh, I think 38. Okay. 38. Yeah. yeah, 38. So if we go like this, yeah, we want to place it like this. So we need to go Okay, so let me do a quick calculation here. The fun thing is with Origin, you can also cal calculate. So it's a fancy calculator. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a bargain, basically. It is. <laughs> it is. It's also a fancy drill press because you can do very accurate holes <laughs> um, with the helix mode. So it's more like a three-dimensional spiral cutting mode. Okay, let's do a quick calculation. We have 38, oop, 38 plus 38 plus 40 millimeters, I think is yep. the gap yep. of the, okay, so that would be 90, and then we have 70, I mean, I could have done this in my head, I guess. Uh, so it's 10 millimeters in, yes. then the font, and then there's 10 millimeters out, so yes. it would be perfectly in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm checking quickly the gap of my grid is 10. We should be good to go, or let's go to five, actually. All right, so I changed the spacing of the grid to just make it even more accurate. 
I click on import and here I have my Festool logo. Here it is, um, but it's the wrong way, right? We don't want it upside down when the bench is uh, standing upwards, so we rotate it by 180 degrees. Nice. And we, our, our handle here is um, right here in the middle, yeah, this little white dot. So I want to move it and I want to move it to X 59 centimeters and then 10 millimeters in, which is my Y coordinate. Yeah. So I will place it right now. And then by double tapping, I can zoom out and can verify that I'm happy and looks good, right? It seems to okay. be in the middle and it seems to be also in the middle of those two. Yeah. Yeah. Things. Okay. So let's go to cut mode. And where do we start? Maybe we're working our way from the right to the left. So let's start with the F. And so now the interesting bit here is as soon as I'm approaching the cut path, it will light up and it will offer me again the outside cut, Which like I did with want. the O. We don't want this right now. So we use the same file for the inside and outside. All I'm doing is I select the, the, the letter, select outside, and then I could go for inside, which we do in a second pass. Um, we will use a three millimeter cutter to be very accurate mm -hmm. in this one. And now I'm going for a pocket actually. Do you have to do that for every single letter, or is it just um, for the in this case? Now? I think I'm, in this case I need to do it for every single one. What you usually would do if you have a bigger job, you would just would it open it on let's say the, an iPad or a mm -hmm. computer, and you can color code it. So depending on the color you use, uh, gotcha. everything will change for you. Yeah. All right. Um, actually, I'm wondering if we could go in here. No, let's do it like this. Um, so we we optimize this design for a three millimeter cutter. So let's not change anything mm -hmm. on the fly. And you can see this little gap here, which we're gonna remove with the three millimeter cutter at the end. All right. So let's dive right into it. Um, but now we need to know the accurate height of our letters because I I messed it up the first time. All right. Um, my O here. So you tell me this time. Looks like 12. 12 point. Okay. Yeah, it looks like 12 ish actually. 12.5. I think what I did before, I didn't use set touch. So I didn't probe my cutter correctly. Okay, so that's true. That was but the then do it to 12 because it's easier to send down. Right, then we send down. Because right? yep. I'm standing in front of the camera. It's easier to send down the ladder but in, instead of the whole bench. So we're going to do it on 12. That should be fine. And yeah, we just didn't probe it. We probe it right now, so we shouldn't do the same oh. mistake again. So what I'm doing here is I press set touch and confirm. Just need to make sure origin is not falling off the bench. So basically what you just did, you just moved the router down or the machine yeah. did it for you. Yeah. It basically, same with the regular routers, if you work with them, we have some videos for that too, if, if, if that's interesting. Um, and it just recognizes where the material starts and from that point upward, it's gonna measure whatever you want to cut. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, so I will take a pretty aggressive approach in this one. I will try, just to save some time here, I will try to cut uh, straight to um, six millimeter of depth. Uh, sorry, to six and then 12 maybe, or maybe even 12 right away. It's it's Let's also see. a bit easier because it's not walnut. Right, it's, yeah. I, what is yeah. it, spruce pine fir? Whatever, spruce. So spruce is really easy to cut basically, so right. that's not a big deal that's... to get a bit more. You can try uh, you can try twelve, but if you if it, if it feels too much, just do it in two steps. So um, just out of experience, explaining why the machine is running is not really working well. I think acoustically, um, yeah, that should be fine. So we explained basically everything. Um, do you want to talk some more about it or? Uh, I, I will I will try to comment on it and we see and try screaming a bit. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna activate the vacuum with the Bluetooth remote. I'm gonna activate the uh, spindle. I'm in pocket mode right now and pocket mode will behave differently. So it's almost like a free free for mode where I can decide where to cut first.
All right, so I'm not even um, trying to clean up here because it's just a pocket operation. I will use my uh, my tools, my wrench, to change the cutter to a three millimeter uh, precision cutter, so we can uh, work out the details here. So, just for your information, something you don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna run through the the, the whole. Um, cutting out the letters part a bit quicklier. Yep. So whoever's watching that video right now, we've skipped that or we at least played speed it, it up. speed yep. it up twice, three times, whatever. So your explanation will be gone. So we're just gonna talk quickly about what we just did. So we had, we have the letters, which are uh, the positive in this case. And what we did was just cut out the negative, but we had like a three millimeter set off to the edge. And that's what we're going to cut now with a three millimeter. Right. So a pocket operation of origin is always a very rough operation where you quickly get the most of the material out. Yep. And now we use a much more precise three millimeter um, cutter in order to uh, to work the edges. Mm -hmm. And now then we are actually on contour and we can fit the letters in. So maybe it's a good time to quickly get DF or E or whatever one of the letters that, so we can dry fit it. Mm -hmm. and also de define what kind of um, offset we're going to use. Because right now it would be like a zero tolerance fit. Mm -hmm. We would need a, like a plastic hammer or so uh, to get them in. And this is not the right way to do it, I guess, especially if you want to glue them in. And with Origin, it's really easy to do offsets, right? So you can just do a negative offset and be like, okay, I need a little bit more clearance, maybe 0.1 millimeter. And so we can test it on the first one. And then we just apply the same offset to all of those letters and fit them in nicely. So no more... No more cheats, no more taping. I don't know, Julian, you know all the, the dirty tricks. Yeah, I've seen them. Seen, seen them, them heard, them, heard about them. Yeah, never, never done them, yeah, of course. Never done them, of course. Okay, so I insert a three millimeter cutter. Um, Origin comes with a three millimeter cutter, a six millimeter cutter, and an engrave bit, but you are free to use any other cutters you want to use. Comes with a, the European version comes with an eight millimeter collet, which is compatible with your festival system. So it's compatible with the OF seven hundred something up to the OF two thousand two hundred. No, no, it's only up to the OF one ten thousand ten or one thousand one hundred. So you can use uh, six millimeter, six point three five, which is a quarter inch, and eight millimeters. And uh, we also deliver uh, one eighth of an inch, call it for really small cutters. Mm -hmm. All right, so I changed the cutter. What I need to do is I need to probe it again, otherwise I will not get the, the accurate um, depth information here. Because uh, the, 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 the router bit is smaller, so you have to get rid of that one millimeter, two millimeter difference that you have. That's correct. So I need to let Origin know that I'm changing the cutter, mm -hmm. but I also need Origin uh, or give Origin the opportunity to touch itself off with the set touch mode. So this should work. Perfect. Okay. Do you need an F? <laughs> an F, yeah, perfect. F is perfect. All right, um, let's get started. We touched off. But that's all you have to change, basically. Yep. One thing, I've just seen there's a small piece of wood in there. I, the, in the, in the dust, dust extraction. Is, that's yeah. why the dust extraction didn't really work at yeah. the end, or not as well. Did it fall out? Yep. Perfect. Okay. So I'm changing my, my line type from pocket to inside. I'm back with yep. the camera. So I'm showing you one more time. So this is the pocket operation I did mm -hmm. before. I changed my color to three millimeters. And now I'm changing the line type from pocket to inside. And this is the remain, what I need to get rid of, and right? We're doing the zero, zero millimeter difference and then work ourselves out if it's too Right, little. yeah. Maybe, actually, you're right. Let's start with an offset right away. Mm -hmm. Or actually, I'm doing six millimeters with zero offset and I'm going to 12 millimeters with 0.1 offset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we try to fit it in. If it's too tight, we go to minus 0.2. Mm -hmm. uh, we find the first uh, the right fit on the first letter, and then we just apply the yep. the same thinking to to all of them. All right, 
So I'm not really used to work ori work origin on yeah. slightly angled edges. There's a something new every day. What you need? Certain risk. Can you I hold, can it, hold here? it? Yeah. I'll get my glasses and off we go. Good to go. All right. Um, let's fire it up again. Vacuum and spindle. A little bit of sand can go in between the sticks and we piece this tear out. I guess if you would have done that. Like the fine work will do later. No, oh. so we'll do the fine work later. Yeah. All right. So we prepped the letters. We can loosely fit them in there, but after the video, we're going to glue them in. We're not going to have it on the video because it's already long enough, I think. Um, so I'd say we just fit in the letters real quickly and then we're good to go. So we're missing the L so far, the L is still glued, but <laughs> that's fine. So we got one O, another O, a T for you, E. It's like a puzzle. This one, it's uh, one second. There's this little. I think there's the O has two oh, different yeah. orientations, and there's too much dirt in here. And that's the O that we cut today, so that might actually be due to of humidity. Yeah. It's that this one fits a bit snuggy. Which we can redo. Yeah, it's actually that's the thing. Right? Yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> it's so yeah. funny. So I'm, I'm, I I was trained being a, 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 a building stairs, and if you build stairs and you don't basically fit them together and have them sit around for a couple of days, yeah. you have to rework them. Yeah. And same and with the letter. what's happened here. So yeah. uh, let me quickly demo that. So let's keep those out. We go back with origin for one last time. Go to the O. We cut this one with 0.3. So let's do 0.10 minus to make sure it's fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it on the other side. So one more extra round for us here will be a very quick one. So what I did, I had a tolerance of 0.03 in here, and now I changed it to 0.1 minus. So I'm taking off a tenth of a millimeter on all sides. I'm plunging into the material. I should definitely activate my, uh oh Yes, thank you. Activate my, all right.
Yo. That's why it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, I turned it off. I don't know why I do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see if it works. So we took off another fraction of a millimeter. It's also a little bit mossy still. Yeah, I think I could punch it in with a hammer, but this is not. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so it fits there. So we're just going to really put those sweaty. in lightly. We're going to take them out again to glue them in, just so you can see the result. And then we're going to call, call it a wrap, I think. That's an O, not an S. And there you go. Yeah. Cool. Should we take it down or? We have it on L. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in place. Um, we're going to flip it over. You have the two brakes on your side. I don't need that camera right now. And we're going to loosen those two clamps so we can see the end result of three week, weeks or three videos of work. And then just loosen the clamp on your side because we work securely. That was fun. I never worked mobile on a bench. Yeah, that's something. Definitely some learnings on this one. I don't know but if we can stand it on here. Nice. I mean, Doesn't those are not really off. in now, but I think we shouldn't push them in further. Is it slightly viewable? So we're going to glue it in, we're going to oil it, and that thing is going to be nice, I think. Yep. So for any more, if you have any questions, of course, leave comments and stuff like that. If you have any more need to know stuff about Shaper, um, you just can go on what side? Shapertools.com. Um, so we are selling uh, directly in Europe. And uh, so you go to shapertools.com, you can find more product videos and you can also buy your Origin if you want that. Yeah. So there's Origin and Workstation and you can buy them in a bundle, get a slight discount and use them with all your Festool gear. Yeah. So we have more and more videos also where we sh show like joint workflows, how to use Origin in combination with an edge router and stuff like this. That sounds appealing. Cool. Well then, we're going to call it a wrap. And Let's thank you for being here. Thank you. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.